Hey YouTube, so today I want to make a quick blower motor replacement video for my Forester. I got a 2016, but this should be relatively the same for 17 all the way down to 14. Um, but the blower motor resistor, I wanted to record a video because the only ones I found made this much more complicated than it needed to be. I mean, they were tearing apart like the entirety of the dash, uh, you know, pulling out this trim piece and, and all of this. and. Uh, sorry, but all that and the trim piece, there's really no need. It's actually a pretty simple job. And, um, you know, I wanted to record something just to kind of make other people's lives simpler, right? Um, but first, let's diagnose the problem real quick, right? The best way to tell that it's your blower motor resistor is uh, if you turn the, the air conditioning on, say, you know, your first speed and uh, almost nothing happens, you know, I got nothing coming out of here. But if you put it on high speed, I have uh, I have air, right? And the reason for that's actually kind of counterintuitive. The the thing is, is the blower motor uh, is not engaged at high speed, right? So it lets all the electricity through and lets your your fan run. But then, um, if you go to lower speed, that's actually when the resistor engages and it lets less electricity to the fan. So if your low speed settings aren't working, then your resistor probably is having issues. Um, if you're not having that type of behavior, it could be the resistor, but you should do more research uh, because I certainly am not confident in saying it's a resistor. Um, so yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a few angles, but it's a really quick job and uh, let's do it. Okay, so we have two angles going. We've got the uh, first one here below the dash. We're going to have to pull the glove box out. It's really easy. You've got the side view. You just pull that bar off. Uh, and then you have two clips holding the drawer in place. You can just compress those, uh, and it's easier to do with two hands, right? So I showed you where they were on the two sides, and uh, you just push with your, your sides on the walls, and it'll come right off. You can just put that on the side. And then that hole on the left, that is where we're going to gain access to the resistor. It's that thing right in the back with the, uh, the white plug on it, two screws, um, won't take much to, to get that out. Just a, just a little bit of patience, really. Um, so you can reach in there. The, the wire harness has a little clip on the bottom, so if you're able to compress that with your hands, perfect. And uh, once you compress it with your hands, you can pull it out like that. You can also use pliers. Pliers would probably make it a little bit easier on your fingers. Uh, but nevertheless, that clip comes right out. Then if you have a little screwdriver like me, that's great. Uh, if not, there is enough room in there for a fairly small screwdriver. Um, your, your large ones will have some issues making them. But um, it doesn't have to be as, as small as mine. And just get in there, try to break it loose. Uh, I also had a second screwdriver, you know, one that comes with like a computer repair kit and a little bit more flexible. But nevertheless, just be patient with it. Uh, it took a little effort, mainly because you can't see, so you kind of have to feel it out. Uh, luckily, it's simple, and you can get that out. All right, so uh, once you have the first screw out and the wire harness, that's what it looks like. we got to get that second screw on the right side. Again, just patience and sweat. It was certainly warm out, um, but nevertheless, that screw will come right out, and even if you drop it, um, it, it really won't hide anywhere. We're, we're above, like, an opening. So the screw just falls right onto the uh, to where your feet would go. Nothing crazy. Um, I did drop the screw later on. And then there it is. The resistor can come right out. Okay, so a few words to the wise. You know, hopefully the, the future narration did a good job talking, but there's the open door. And, and just don't forget the way that this thing went in, right? The clip's on the bottom. You want to make sure you clip your wiring harness in and everything correctly. So there is the old... It uh, you know, it doesn't look that bad, but it, it certainly was not working. Um, a little rusty on the bottom, and uh, time to go in with the new. Okay, so I just wanted to be real careful as I was inserting this new one in. Certainly a lot shinier, um, but there's certain you know there's things you could hit your your hand the resistor on, so you don't want to do that. I had to push the wiring harness out of the way. It was a little stubborn, um, but nevertheless, you can get it right back in there. And uh, the, the toughest part is just getting the screw started. I thought it was easiest to kind of feel it out, get them started by hand. Um, if you have a screwdriver with magnetic tip, you could just hold it right on the edge of the screwdriver and sneak it in. But once you get the, the screw started, then you can just uh, sneak it in 
Also, um, you know, I used my phone as a flashlight to kind of see the sun angle was not getting favorable by the end of this. And, uh, you know, even though this is all sped up, the whole project took about, uh, you know, 20 minutes for an inexperienced person like myself to, to just screw it in. And again, that's just feeling it out, being kind of patient with it, uh, nothing too fancy, right? There were um, very few things you actually need to, uh, to get out of the way. Um, another thing, you're, you're going to want to get this screwed in real tight. Um, it's, you know, if your car is anything like mine, it's going to feel like you, you may be over torquing it, but then you may, uh, you tap the resistor a little bit and you notice it's still, uh, you know, flopping around. So obviously you don't want it cross threaded, but also you want to make sure it's in there snug so you don't get vibration while you're driving. Um, and then once you are confident that it's snug in there, then the wiring harness just pops right in and that's, uh, you know, nothing too fancy. And so this is me just uh, screwing it in, tightening it up, because I noticed before I put in the wiring harness, it was kind of uh, shaking, and you didn't want that road noise. So I used the, I thought the little screwdriver was a little bit easier than the flexible one to really get some, uh, get that in there tight. Um, like I said, nothing too bad. There it is, wiring harness and all in place. Looks just like the original. Okay, so at this point, I've been sitting in the sun the whole time. I'm pretty sweaty, so I sure hope this works. Get the car started. And test the uh, blower motor. Yep, there's uh, my nice two, three, and four. Okay, now if this didn't fix your problem, uh, it's a shame you had to go through the work, but you know there, there's also a chance that it could actually be your bloater motor and not just the resistor, uh, which you could consider changing that as well. It's not too bad, you would just drop that piece under the dash. It could also be this control unit, which in my case uh, ended up being an additional problem, um, and that is a bit less trivial to take apart. Um, there are not very many good dedicated YouTube videos, and because of that custom stereo I have, mine was actually a bit easier to do than uh, by default, so I wouldn't feel comfortable making a video misleading you. But I will uh, link a few videos in the description of stereo replacements, and in order to replace the stereo, you have to take that unit out anyways. So I think there's some good sources on how to remove that air conditioner control unit if you do need to replace that to fully fix your problem. Otherwise, I hope this helped, and uh, have a good one.